Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is my follow-on video from the guinea pig diets video, which if you haven't seen and want to learn more about what makes a healthy guinea pig diet for your piggies, then do go and check it out. It's linked down in the description below. So for this video, what I've done is pick out eight of the most commonly asked and most confusing questions about guinea pig diet and hopefully give you guys some answers and some guidance for feeding your own piggies. Straight off with the first question and it's about vitamin C and whether we need to be giving a supplement or not. Because piggies can't produce their own vitamin C and like us, they'll get scurvy if they don't get enough of it. Now there's conflicting advice on the internet so you'll read that some people always supplement it whilst others never have. My advice would be to offer extra vitamin C only if you have a piggy who's unwell or completely off fresh food, for example due to a digestive problem. With good hay, pellets fortified with vitamin C and some fresh vegetables every day, something like a slice of red pepper is a really good one to include because it's super high in vitamin C, adult piggies won't need a supplement. If you do have an unwell piggy and you choose to supplement vitamin C then don't add it to the water, don't use it in a multivitamin form when you've got loads of other vitamins in there as well. Go for a liquid or tablet form or you can get get something like the Oxbow vitamin C hay tabs. And in general, do remember that vitamin C has a short shelf life. So for your pellets, store them in a cool, dark, sealed place and don't buy too big of a bag at once. That'll last you for months to come because the vitamin C level will gradually disappear. Next up, I often get asked from new owners what to do about feeding alfalfa. So firstly, alfalfa or lucerne is not not a grass but in its dried form it can get included with hay or put into other dried guinea pig foods including pellets. Alfalfa is higher in calcium and protein which is good for piggies under six months old but not recommended for normal adults. So it's a confusing topic whether extra alfalfa is essential or not for young piggies but my advice would be to keep the same pellets and unlimited hay for younger piggies as for adults. Alfalfa is actually available in a compressed hay cube form and for me I found giving these as a treat to younger piggies works out well and is an easy way of doing things whilst not having to worry about making big diet changes. Then once they get over six months old you can just continue with the same hay and pellets and if you still want to give hay cubes in addition you can get 100% Timothy ones. Now looking at the other end of the scale, what about senior piggies and their diets? Well hopefully changes to the diet won't be needed as your piggy gets older. However, do bear in mind that senior piggies can get sensitive digestion, sometimes out of nowhere. Health problems like bloat and slowing down of the digestive tract can mean that getting enough fibre is even more essential for the older pig. So continue to offer good quality hay and include Timothy if you can. It might mean that some fresh vegetables now cause soft poops and should be avoided and you should take extra care to introduce new food slowly and gradually for an older piggy, including fresh grass during springtime. This sort of ties in with the next question which is how often and how much fresh vegetables to give. Now I did talk about this in the last video where I explained how I now give smaller amounts and spread them more throughout the day. The standard advice is to give one cup per piggy per day, which I don't really think is a great way of measuring it. Also, as digestive problems are common in piggies, this is the most common health problem that I've encountered, and I don't know whether it has anything to do with the way I used to feed veggies, but now I would avoid giving big piles of veggies at once. So pick five different vegetables and give one small piece of each to each piggy spread over the day. And if you have a senior piggy with a sensitive digestion, it might be best to reduce this further. Take Lyra for example, she now hardly ever gets vegetables. Just because I can see the effect they have on her, she gets soft poops very easily and she also gets bloated. So as long as I make sure she gets enough vitamin C and the right amount of pellets, unlimited hay and grass, she is best off without too many vegetables. 
Moving on, and the next question is, is grass and forage necessary? And what if I don't have a garden? Well, if this is you, don't worry if you don't have access to fresh forages. Bear in mind that hay is the number one important food that your guinea pig eats and they will enjoy fresh vegetables in moderation, so forages aren't really essential. If you want to though, some people do have a place where they can go and collect fresh grass and other safe plants for their piggies. If you do this though, make sure you wash anything that you cut and try to avoid anywhere where dogs and cats might have been peeing. Okay, so the next one is possibly one of the most confusing things about owning guinea pigs and it's the amount of calcium they need, or more specifically, the calcium to phosphorus ratio. Basically, there's an ideal balance of these two nutrients and when piggies eat an imbalanced diet, which is usually too much calcium, they can be prone to bladder and kidney stones. Because a lot of piggies develop these, some owners worry about how to reduce the amount of calcium in their piggy's diet. If you have a piggy who has had stones, you will probably want to look at the calcium chart of fresh vegetables and make sure that you feed a balanced selection. But whether you've experienced stones or not, for all owners, my advice is to do the following. Number one, make sure you don't overfeed their pellets. These have more calcium in than you might think. Number two, if you live in an area with hard water, filter the water before your pigs drink it. And number three, feed high calcium veggies sparingly, especially cabbages, spinach, and parsley. And at number seven, we have treats. So if you watched my previous video, you might have noticed that I didn't speak about treats because they shouldn't really form part of your standard guinea pig diet. And personally, I rarely give my guinea pigs treats. Okay, let's rephrase that. I only ever give my piggies natural treats where the ingredients are either hay and dried forages, dried vegetables, or ingredients that are also found in their pellets. Small treats like occasional pea flakes are great for bonding with your piggies, as is fresh food. So you can give things like forages and small amounts of dried fruit, but anything that looks artificial or looks like it might have added colorants or other additives, just don't waste your money and avoid them. Always bear in mind that your guinea pigs will prefer fresh food above all and they see that as a treat. So stick to the basics and consider letting your piggies out for floor time instead of keeping them in the cage and feeding them treats as they'll get more enrichment from that. You can always combine floor time with giving them dried forages or fresh foods to give them a bit more enrichment. Now the final question is a good one and it's is my guinea pig fat? <laughs> Well, I'm not surprised people ask this considering the constant eating, the tendency to resemble potatoes, and the massive variation of weights that can be normal for guinea pigs. Anything from 700 to 1,500 grams. So the answer is that there isn't an ideal weight, and what's more important is the way your piggy feels. So if you pick them up, a good gauge of chunkiness is that in a healthy piggy, you can feel the rib cage but individual ribs don't stick out too much. And the same goes for other areas such as the spine and the hips. What's also really important is to monitor their individual weight on a weekly basis. Keep a record and if you see a gradual or sudden drop in weight, then this could be one of the first signs of a health condition and you should take your piggies to an experienced vet. And that's all eight questions we have for this video, so I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. If you learned something new about guinea pig diets, then let me know in the comments below. And if you think this video will be useful for others, then please give us a thumbs up. As always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye bye!